brought to you by Kenneth Nugent. From the station that's on your side, this is News 12, first at 5. As summer starts to wind down, we had multiple deadly shootings over the weekend, the violence being felt across both states. And it's the first day of August, back to school for some, but we are a long way away from those fall temperatures. We're tracking some weather forecasts in just about 10 minutes. Riley, thanks a lot. We saw multiple shootings across the area over the weekend. Yesterday evening, someone died in a drive-by shooting in Clearwater. In Burke County, an early Saturday morning shooting at an unlicensed bar. One person killed there, four injured. And this past Thursday, a man shot in Augusta. His condition is not known. Claire Allen breaking down the shootings and what law enforcement has to say about this wave of crime. The Burke County Sheriff's Office says there have been at least 23 calls to this private home since July of 2018. They also say that this isn't the first time that gunshots have rang out here. They say those calls related to disturbance and nuisance, damage and vandalism, and weapons and firearms. Early Saturday morning, police were called to 232 Claxton Road, where they say five people were shot, and one of those victims died. Officers recovered shell casings from the scene from at least three different guns. Burke County says the owner of the home has been arrested for four, and charged with operating a disorderly house. This time he was given a citation for the same thing. You get 60 people together and they're drinking and somebody starts arguing and, and fighting and you don't know what's going to happen. Later on noon, Trevor, 6 o'clock, I will have details on where this investigation stands. In Burke County, Claire Allen, on your side. Some South Carolina students back in the classroom for the first day today, and with this new year comes the first time a new law is in effect concerning what happens if families cannot or don't pay for their students' meals at school. Our State House reporter Mary Green here now with details. Up until this school year, South Carolina students had built up debts for not paying for their breakfasts or lunches at schools. Their districts could legally send debt collectors after them. A new law passed earlier this year here at the State House has put an end to this in time for this new school year. We uh, discovered that this was actually happening in um, several schools and school districts across the state. We thought that it was, uh, our estimate, impacting a little over 120,000 students. Meg Stanley directs the nonprofit Coles Fire, which works to provide access to nutritious food and physical activity across South Carolina and push to get this legislation passed. She says they view the use of debt collection agencies or schools giving these students a different lunch than everyone else as a form of meal shaming. But Stanley says a lot of families that were building up lunch debts and couldn't pay them likely qualify for free or reduced lunches. She recommends families check in with their districts before the first day of school or in the first week back to see if they qualify and if there's anything they need to fill out to apply. If their family is facing school lunch debt, they more than likely um, are receiving or, or facing a lot of different struggles. Hunger doesn't need to be what they need to be called out for in school. And for the past two school years, every student in the country qualified for free meals regardless of their income because of a federal pandemic related program. Congress did not extend that program for this new school year. So Stanley says some families may not even realize they could soon start to be charged for school meals. Another reason she recommends everyone check in with their school district before this new school year begins. Reporting from the State House, I'm Mary Green. In some school districts, every student receives free meals because their school is located in a lower income area. We're continuing to learn the full scope of the tragedy coming out of Kentucky. At least 30 people dead now, dozens more still missing. Thousands of people in the state are still without power this afternoon. And the state's governor says they could be finding bodies for weeks with more rain on the way. Emergency crews have rescued thousands of people in just a matter of days, but those efforts could last for weeks as first responders struggle to make it into those remote, damaged areas. Things weren't hard enough on the people of this region. They're, they're getting rain right now. There is severe storm potential today in all of the impacted areas. That is just not right. And it is not the first catastrophic event the state has seen in the last year. An unusual December tornado killed 80 people in the state. 
Three men convicted of federal hate crimes for chasing and killing Ahmaud Aubrey in Brunswick. Expected to be sentenced in federal court today. The father and son, Greg and Travis McMichael, and their neighbor, William Roddy Bryan, each facing a maximum penalty, life in prison, after a federal jury found their killing was motivated by race. All three men already serving life sentences for murder convictions in state court. They were convicted in the hate crime case back in February. Most U.S. students are heading into the new school year with an optional mask policy. The data company Burbido says about 98% of the top 500 kindergarten through 12th grade students do not require face coverings. But the School Superintendents Association says policies could change in some areas where COVID cases are rising now. The CDC is recommending universal indoor masking for schools and early education programs in locations with high COVID levels. Speaking of school, many are starting back this week. We're taking a look at open house dates for you right there. In Richmond County, the first day of school comes up on August the 4th and again on the 8th. Open house for elementary, K through 8, and C.T. Walker Magnet tomorrow from noon until 6. And for middle, high, and A.R. Johnson Magnet and Richmond County Technical Career Magnet Schools, that open house is Wednesday from noon until 6. In Columbia County, the middle school open house will be tonight from 4.30 until 6.30. Elementary school will hold their open house tomorrow from 4.30 until 6.30 in the evening. The first day of school in Columbia County coming up this Thursday. Live look for you right now. Out, there's also some road work happening on Fury's Ferry for the road widening project that's been going on there. That starts today through the rest of the week. From 9 until 4, look for lane closures at both Sullivan Hartfield Road and Oleander Drive off Fury's Ferry. Expect delays and be careful going around those workers who are out there in that area. Some breaking news to pass along. We're learning more about a standoff in Augusta earlier today. Around noon, deputies called to Hunter Street, which is off Wrightsboro Road. Deputies tell us they were told that Terrell Crawford Jr. had fired shots during an argument at a home there. The other people in the home left, but police believe Crawford was still inside. The Richmond County SWAT team went inside. Crawford, they say, was not there. Police say they're actively searching for him as we speak. Inflation continuing to impact the price of everything, and that includes our furry friends. We take a look at how much it's costing pet parents. Coming up next, first at five. And it has been another hot afternoon with high temperatures near 97, but we are tracking some rain cold air moving through the area. Update on radar and the rest of the week's forecast just after break. But looks like those thunderstorms will be with us most afternoons. Animal shelters in some parts of the country seeing more pets returning to the shelter. Some owners are struggling with the rising cost of rent and food and gas, making that difficult decision to surrender their pet. Michael George takes a look at the effects of inflation on pet owners. Mira Horowitz of Lucky Dog Animal Rescue unloads a transport van of animals fortunate enough to be finding homes. This is the toughest summer that I have seen in 13 years of being involved in animal welfare. Horowitz and her team work with Todd Hill Shelters, bringing animals to the D.C. metro area for foster and adoption. But those needing a home have far outpaced people looking for a pet. I've never turned down puppies. I am turning down puppies this year. Data from Best Friends Animal Society show 355,000 cats and dogs were killed in U.S. shelters in 2021 the first increase in five years. Inflation-induced financial hardship is now forcing some owners to surrender their pets. We have to make a decision about, like, you know, we need a roof for the baby and us. And shelters in parts of the country are overwhelmed and understaffed. We only have so much space in our facility, so if we don't have the room, then we have to tell them no. Another reason for the animal surplus, a suspension of spay and neuter early in the pandemic. Now we're in like the fourth generation of those unwanted litters that came out of that time. Organizations like the ASPCA are offering assistance to owners in need, ranging from food to veterinary care to help keep pets in their forever homes. The ASPCA's community veterinary clinics, like this one in Brooklyn, provide partially and fully subsidized preventative care to qualifying pet owners. There is a wide spectrum of what pet owners can afford, and all along that spectrum, there's a limit to how much people can pay for care. Horowitz hopes the dog days of summer don't slow down the pace of giving these little guys a new leash on life. Michael George, CBS News, New York. So a good time to adopt if you can.
Okay, parents, listen up. While your kids are having fun playing video games, there may be something more dangerous going on in the background. We're going to explain in the next Watching Your Wallet. The live mic. On our area, the CDC says Georgia is reporting 351 cases of monkeypox. In South Carolina, 16 cases confirmed so far. And so far, no cases confirmed locally in our area. In California, the McKinney fire is growing and it's reached the Oregon border now. It's one of more than 50 wildfires burning in the western half of America right now. The firestorm is being fueled by high winds, the heat wave there, and the decades-long buildup of dry brush. The blaze is threatening hundreds of structures in a northern California county, already destroying several homes and a community hall there. 70% of families have at least one child who plays video games. That's according to the Entertainment Software Association. And whether it's cyber bullies or hackers, experts say you need to be aware of potential threats. Consumer investigator Rachel DePompa breaks down ways to protect you and your family in this Watching Your Wallet. Gaming can be fun and social, but several experts tell me you have to make sure that your child is prepared for what can go wrong in online games. Cyberbullying can escalate while gaming, especially in those chat windows. Parents can screenshot any offensive conversations and report them to the game administrators. Andre Sedenko is a web content analyst with cybersecurity company Kaspersky. He says your child must never create user IDs with any part of their real names or nicknames. He also says you must teach your child never to give out their address, geolocation, or login credentials and password in a chat window. They may single out your know, channel in a general chat channel and then start sending personal messages that ask for their own personal information. If they have your child's real name, cyber criminals have been known to search out a child's other social media accounts and try to connect there as well. He says if you have a webcam on a gaming device you are using, for instance, if you play on a personal computer, cover the webcam with a piece of tape. And if you can, disable the chat feature altogether so you don't have to worry about your child sharing personal information accidentally. And you want to disable any in-game purchases, especially if your credit card is tied to an account. Some dangerous online games can trick you into purchases or sharing personal information, so read up on every game that your child likes to play. With this, watching your wallet, I'm Rachel DePompa. All right, some good tips there. Thank you for that, Rachel. Looking ahead to our weekend forecast, our temperatures finally do tick down a few more degrees, staying in the low 90s each afternoon, but watch out for a few storms. Then look at that seven-day forecast just after the break. Really, you and your flood threat or anything like that, but we are tracking some pretty steady rain in Warren County, Glasscock County, trying to move eastward towards us here in Augusta. Now, for the next three days, we are going to stay hot, folks, mid-90s the next few afternoons, and then this weekend, just a little bit cooler. Hard to believe, but some local students are already heading back to school today. A look at who's next to hit the books when we come back.